Okay, what I've got shown here is um, uh, two pulses uh, being produced by my NMR uh, spectrometer. Uh, the first one is a 90 degree pulse, which is uh, right here, and that's about 25 microseconds in length. The second pulse is right here, and that is about 50 microseconds in length. And the spin echo is occurring at uh, double the time, so this time, and then the same length of time after, and that's our spin echo right there. So let me try and uh, just uh, zoom in on the spin echo, if I can, hopefully. And there we can see our spin echo, uh, which is kind of a uh, double pyramid shape, up and down. And that's just expanded a little more. And then if we go back to our pulses, we can see the ring down from the uh, second pulse, 180 degree pulse, and you can see it there. And then, oops, go to our first pulse, or 9 degree pulse, you can see it there, and it's not really on maximum, if we had tune it here, we can make it a little bit stronger, but for the spin echo, it, there seems to be like a precise point uh, in terms of the magnetic adjustment where it appears to be the strongest, if we then go back and look for it can see that where we've adjusted the magnetic field for the maximum on the 90 degree pulse the spin echo disappears but if we now adjust it a bit you see now it reappears here so it's a little bit off uh, from the center that you would get from the, uh, the ring down and there's the spin echo again We'll just adjust the magnetic field you can see it has a definite peak in the magnetic field and uh, on our meter we've got uh, 0.91 uh, amps is the uh, optimum and this is the sample that we're looking at is glycerol uh, which is the strongest sample uh, that we have in uh, in our uh, group right now, and that's because of the nuclear overhauser effect uh, helping the signal with glycerol. Okay.